Fresh Digital TV. BD TV. It's hard to play the guitar and not think of Lenny Bro. March of 1979, I came to Nashville, and uh, John Knowles uh, took me down to meet Chet Atkins. And uh, Chet wasn't there, and John had to go back to Blair School of Music to teach, so I just hung around. I was sitting down at RCA, and a car pulled up, and uh, Lenny Bro got out. Coincidentally, I was holding uh, the Lenny Bro Now album in my hand. He walked past me, and he got about three feet past me, and he turned around and looked at me, and he says, is that my album? And I looked at it, and I said, I guess it is. And he says, well, come on in here. And he got his guitar out and said, you know, you like my playing? I said, oh, yeah, you know. And so he started playing for me, and, and I told him I was there to meet Chet. And he goes, well, I just talked to him. He's on his way down here. Just hang out with me, and I'll introduce you. It was about an hour before Chet actually got there, but Lenny just kept playing and playing, and he was, um, you know, just showing me his seven-string nylon, and he had me play it, and I was completely lost on that guitar, because, you know, seven strings. When Chet got there, he introduced me, and we rode up the elevator to Chet's office, and I'd never met Chet Atkins, and, and I was so surprised, because when we got off the elevator, uh, Lenny says, hey Chet, this is a good friend of mine, Bill Piper, <laughs> as if I'd known him for 20 years. For the next uh, two, three hours, I sat around Chet's office and passing the guitars back and forth. And I was so nervous because I had Chet Atkins on the left hand side and Lenny Bro on the right. And I thought, oh my God. So the very first time I played for Lenny Bro and the very first time I played for Chet Atkins was all in the same day. So that was quite an experience. I spoke with him on the phone over the next several months uh, while he was out in Los Angeles, talked to him. And I remember asking him once about um, taking some lessons from him. And he says, yeah, man, come on out. And I said, well, what will you charge? And he says, oh, I don't know, maybe $17 an hour. And I laughed and I said, $17 an hour? I said, you're Lenny Bro. I said, you need to be charging at least $100 an hour. He's like, oh, that's all right, you know. I remember one day uh, talking to him and he says, I'm like, man, I don't want you to think I'm some kind of religious nut. He says, but I think I'm getting in touch with God with my music. And I said, Lenny, I said, you did that a long time ago. He's like, oh man, I appreciate that. It was just, and, and speaking with him was so you know, inspiring. And uh, I never did make it out to California, just couldn't afford to do that. But just the thought of it was, was you know, enough to inspire me. The song that I played or attempted to play is uh, titled Lenny Blue and I just recently uh, wrote it uh, for a class I was going to give at uh, Austin P University up in Clarksville and I was trying to uh, tell the students about how Lenny Bro would, would use the thirds and sevenths uh, as the accompaniment underlying a melody so it just, I just made a little blues tune and it um, ended up being named Lenny Blue. Just a fun tune to play, and it just kind of a, a hint at, at his genius, but only a hint. That was one of the greatest moments 
of my life, meeting him and uh, speaking with him. And although I, I wish I could have spent more time with him, it was a great inspiration, a wonderful experience. So, And I probably think of him every day. It's hard to play the guitar and not think of Lenny Bro. You know, well, you know, you have those days in your life, you know, that are just, it's like, wow. So I've been waiting, you know, 30 years for that day. <laughs> it's just one of those things.